Alrighty, we are back with part two. It has actually been about a week um, this time. Actually, maybe even a week and a half. I'm not entirely sure. I'd have to look back at my other video um, and the date on it. But it's been really cool here. Usually, I'm just going to move the camera really quick. This is out in our shop. We have an old wood stove here. And when it's really, really cold, we keep it um, just not going really strongly but just a little bit and our um heater in our house died a few months ago and since it's so close to spring we're not going to fix it because we're hoping to do um, a little remodel project and put a different um, heating system in but anyways so it has been cold out here because we haven't kept the wood stove going like normal because it's been warm enough that it just wasn't important um but cold enough that out here this was pretty chilly and um, like I mentioned in the first part one of the main things we're wanting is the bacteria growth in here and so while it does have kind of a gross factor you know you can see the mold um, this this little little spots of mold and then there's just kind of a general gray hue <laughs> to this but that is exactly what we want and with and with plants and gardening and stuff like that this is this is just ultimate joy this is fantastic so um, I have talked about doing a video on fertilizers and I still hopefully will do that one time but I'm uh, at some point I mean but until then I just want to mention really quick why the bacteria is so important here so when you get a non-organic fertilizer so you go to Walmart and you pick up um, a little bag of the blue mineral grow crystals you know for example um, and you put those on your plant. That is in a format that is really, really readily absorbable. And oftentimes we think that means yay, that means it's better because it's more easily accessible. However, plants need a very specific ratio of water to nutrients or else they will burn. Um, they can actually dehydrate themselves. It's, it's, completely fascinating um, but too many nutrients actually will kill your plant too many readily available nutrients I should say it that way um, can kill your plants and um, we call it fertilizer burn a lot of times with organic fertilizers you don't have that same problem and the reason is the form is different and um, if you've seen my eggshell video, I'm just going to stir this up and kind of start um, doing stuff while I'm talking about this. Um, but if you've seen my eggshell um, video where I talk about using eggshells for calcium and how um, the organic versus inorganic minerals um, react very, very differently with your plants. And we can use vinegar to help break the calcium carbonate down into an organic um or into an inorganic form that the plants can um, utilize better. Okay, so let me just pause here really quick and just say what I'm gonna do really quick because this is gonna take a little bit. So, this has been sitting for like a week. I'll keep going as to why it matters that it's moldy and delicious. Um, I'll get there. But what I'm gonna do is strain it out. Now, you can strain it through a little hand strainer if you have, but what's easiest, I think, is just taking a piece of cotton um, muslin or this is just cheesecloth. And um, I have it, you can just tie it around the edge. I'm using wire because I didn't want to cut anything, so I just wrapped a wire and then I'm just gonna wind it back up and use it. Um, and I just have it in a nice big hollow so that it's not, you don't want it tight across the top because then um, it could easily go over the edge and you don't want to be slopping this everywhere. So I've got a nice big hole right here and I'm just scooping this out with my handy little scoop here that I use for all manner of garden things. And we're just going to start straining this as I talk. Um, anyways, in that, in that video about eggshells, I explained the concept a little bit, but, um, when a plant like this um, breaks down, you know, into compost, etc., and goes into the soil, it takes a while for it to get into a usable form for the plant. Again, you would think, well, it's a plant, so the plant can just reabsorb it, right? But it doesn't actually work that way. And what breaks the nutrients down to make them back from an organic to an inorganic nutrient is bacteria and is all these little mold spores and all this stuff that we usually think of as ew it's actually what is doing all of the hard work of making these nutrients available for our plants so 
When we do a tea like this, you can totally just make a regular tea for your plants and let it set overnight or for example, use boiling water. It still is removing the nutrients out of the plant material that you're using and can be used as a fertilizer. However, when you water that into your plants, it will then take some number of weeks or months depending on the nutrient and which bacteria is required to break it down and whether that bacteria is in your potted plants or not, which is a whole nother thing. Um, to break down the tea that you're giving it into a form where the plant can actually absorb it again and it can actually help it. So when we um, ferment something like this and let it set for a while, which is what we're doing with this tea by letting it set until it gets moldy, and it's also why we added the molasses was to um, just speed up the um, bacteria, give the bacteria something yummy to eat so that they um, uh, colonize faster and reproduce faster and what those bacteria are doing are breaking down all of these great nutrients that are in these herbs that we're using in this particular tea and they are making them much more readily available for the plant and with potted plants in particular in especially those indoors outdoors um, they get exposed to a lot more uh, bacteria but indoor potted plants a lot of times the soil especially if it's been sterilized in the past doesn't contain the bacteria needed for um, the plant nutrients to really break down when you're feeding it in an organic form and so this kind of a tea really helps um, with a lot of things I'm getting my my buckets getting full here I'm gonna have to um, empty it here because my um, I noticed it wasn't dripping anymore all of a sudden, <laughs> so it's hanging down too low and it's um, in the tea, which is totally fine. I'm just gonna drain these off into some um, jugs and use them. Um, but anyways, so um, watering with a tea like this that has great bacteria content is going to help on so many levels other than just a fertilizer. Um, because it might look like a lot of trouble to go to, which really it isn't. It's so easy to just throw whatever grass clippings or whatever you have. Grass clippings are even great. They're full of nitrogen and all kinds of amazing stuff. Um, and they um, attract some really, really great bacteria and usually mold up really nice, which is a really funny thing to say out loud that something molded up really nicely. <laughs> But anyways, um, it's it's pretty easy, but it might seem like a lot of trouble um, just when you could easily just put a little bit of, you know, miracle Grow on your plants. But for long-term health of plants, organic um, nutrients from organic sources are so, so much more healthy and um, so much more beneficial long-term. And they break down slowly over time so they don't have the risk of burning um, or harming your plant, dehydrating it, etc. like other fertilizers do if you overdo it. So you really can't overdo it because um, it slowly breaks down with a few things you can. Um, I don't want to make that as a blanket statement. You can still um, burn plants with um, certain ingredients, but with a tea like this, with, with a plant-based tea like this, you don't have to worry about um, overdosing them or you know, flooding them with some kind of a nutrient. It's gonna, the bacteria that we've um, started brewing in here is going to um, start breaking down these nutrients and help some of them be readily available and the rest will slowly continue to break down over time and be even more available. So, um, I think I really probably don't need to show the rest of this. I, I'm just gonna un, undo this top um, part right here and take the cheesecloth off and drain the bucket into some jugs that I have here um, that I usually collect rainwater in and um, water my plants. Now, um, I could leave this, just, just as an FYI, I could leave this for weeks and weeks and weeks and it would be totally fine and not only totally fine, it would just get better and better and better for the plants. The reason I don't with indoor plants is because of the smell. I let this ferment until like right now it smells very minty. It's a very minty um, mixture because I had mint and chamomile and lemon balm and several other things like that. So it's a really nice smelling tea, but it smells like um, a mixture of tea and vinegar. 
is all. It doesn't smell rotten or, um, you know, rank or any anything nasty because I can't handle that <laughs> with my indoor plants. It just, it overwhelms me. And so I, I don't let this go too far, but there's not a too far as far as your plants are concerned. They will love it. It's, it's just a question of what your nose will love or not. And it really, really, really depends on what type of plant material you're using. Some plant material you can leave for weeks and it will be completely molded and just looking disgusting and it doesn't smell bad at all other plant material a few days and it can just be like oh my goodness if you know there's a dead mouse somewhere kind of a smell and so you might just want to play around with that and the temperature really really matters um, this amount of mold would have happened in a day or two um, if it was warm and if this was summer but this is early spring here in Idaho and we still are mostly cold or freezing ish weather and so this was indoors and um it was cool so you know sitting here for a week or a week and a half whatever it was um wasn't too much um i just thought of something else what was it indoors oh the other thing is you don't really want to cover this i don't think i mentioned that at the first of the video when we were doing this and the reason is um if you've ever made yeast um from natural sources from the air etc it you know that the air just has so many bacteria in it that we can't see and they just um, really help populate this um, soup, this delicious, lovely um, tea. And so covering it while, if you need to, if, if animals are gonna get into it or if there's some reason that you need to cover it, you totally can. It's ideal not to because you'll get more um, of the bacteria from the air that will help this start fermenting. And so um, I, I like to leave it uncovered if at all possible. Um, and what was the other thing? I thought of two things there. Uncovering. Maybe it was just the time of year, and I already mentioned that, um, that the time of year really matters. You know, what, what you might leave for one or two days, you know, in the winter you might leave for weeks. And um, so, yeah, um, that's it. I am going to, um, like I said, pour this into jugs and then go give all of my plants a drink. I like to do this first thing in the spring um, just to kind of give them a gentle nudge to wake up. And uh, they really seem to appreciate it. This or a willow extract, which I don't have any fresh willow um, right now. I do have the um, bottled stuff that I can use as well, but so I'm going with the back to the herbal tea for this spring. And um, I just water them as usual. You know, normally uh, you can dilute it if you want to. If you're making a smaller batch, you can totally dilute it um, as well, but you don't need to. It's not gonna burn them or anything like that. Um, I did this with rainwater, like I said. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. Sorry, I'm just going through my mental, my mental catalog here. All right, I think that's it. I will just go ahead and strain the rest of this off camera and give my plants their happy little drink. And there is how to make some great compost tea or herbal tea or plant tea, whatever you want to call it. It's called by many, many names. And um, give your plants a little boost for the spring. Um, if you would like to join the Facebook group, there will be a link in the description box below, as well as um, my Instagram um, handle, I think is what I call it. <laughs> I think that's what you're supposed to call it. I'm not an Instagram guru, but uh, my Instagram handle is there. If you would like to follow me on Instagram, uh, there'll be a lot more photos coming up as the spring gets going and as everything starts waking up. We have a really late spring here and this year, this is um, April, the, the middle end of April and we have had as of now, I think 11 days that have been sunny or you know, 30% or less cloud cover, <laughs> only 11 days this whole year. And that's unusual for where we are. I know some places that's really um, normal, but for here that's pretty unusual. So everything's kind of slow this spring. Um, and so I don't have a ton of photos going on Instagram, but there will be more as everything wakes up. Alrighty, I will talk to you guys soon. And until next time, happy growing. It occurred to me you probably would like to see what the tea actually looks like <laughs> after I said goodbye. So, um, and I'm looking at this here, and I actually may dilute this a little bit and make it go a little farther. Um, I, this amount won't be enough to water all of my plants with, 
So I think I'm actually gonna dilute this about half and half with Wayne water since it's nice and dark. Um, I, I didn't think it would be quite this dark um, with this amount of time. So I'm pretty, pretty pleased with that. So there you go. There's the tea. Alrighty, I'm done for real now. <laughs> Talk to you guys soon and happy growing.